at this time we call the special meeting of the Board of Parish <coughs> Board for Monday, May 23rd, 2022 to order. First item of business is to request our superintendent, Mr. Tim Cooley, to uh, lead us in prayer and in the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Cooley. Let's pray together. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your watch care over us. Lord, we do lift up each and every one of our graduates this year, dear Lord, as they make decisions, dear Lord, about the future. We lift our other children to you, dear Lord, at this time as summer approaches, dear Lord. Just pray that you keep a hand upon them, dear Lord. Give them guidance. Help adults to be good leaders during the summer, dear Lord, and for our young ones as we prepare, dear Lord, for what is ahead. We just ask your leadership and your guidance in our meeting tonight. For it's all in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cooley. Uh, welcome to all of you here. We only have one item on the agenda, and I guess we will officially adopt the agenda in just a second. Uh, here's how I think the meeting will progress or, or move on. We'll look at the agenda. If it's suitable, we'll adopt it. Uh, then we'll hear from Dr. Blair. Uh, sometimes his presentations answer some of the questions, you know, that people in the audience have. As we hear from Dr. Blair, then we'll turn it over to the audience. We have three green cards. We'll ask you to come up when your name's called, state your name, your address, and you have, we ask you to hold it to about five minutes, your comments uh, on the subject. Once we've heard from the three uh, people who have filled out a green card, then it moves back to the board uh, for whatever action and discussions and stuff they want. Okay, at this time, I'll turn it over to Dr. Blair. Do I adopt your agenda first? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, all of you have an agenda in front of you. Any corrections to the agenda as presented? Hearing none, I'll ask for a chair to call for a vote. All in favor of adoption of the agenda as presented? Indicate so by saying yes. 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 Any opposed? Indicate so by saying no. Thanks, Doc. Appreciate it. Now it's your turn. Good evening, everyone, members, and the public. Um, has it been a week since we were here? Like Seems that. like three or four days. I don't know. Um, so I think to I'm going to go quickly through the meat of my presentation that I would typically give, because we've heard it two times here already. Um, then I'll move to the three plans you have in front of you to debate. Um, real short, whenever, after every decennial census, every jurisdiction that runs in, in single member districts must examine their districts to see if they're malapportioned. What is malapportioned? It is taking your current districts, adding the 2020 population to them, and if they are out of deviation by more plus or minus 5%, then you must redraw them to get them within that population equality. So there are two main things we have to look at. Population equality, get within that deviation, which all of these three plans do. And also examine your minority majority district to make sure it's compliant with the Voting Rights Act of 1965, which we have done. We're close with Ms. Bruner. We've done the best we can with her district. It maintains it as a minority district. After that, it's really up to the school board to determine the best way y'all envision representing your parish and your schools. Um, as such, let's, I mean, and we can, I can come back to all this information. I can bore you to death and give you insomnia, trust me. Um, important things to know, that's Equal Protection, 14th Amendment, Voting Rights Act, 1965. Um, 
one thing we should add here. Because this is a school board plan, the school board has a limited ability to split precincts and only to get within that population deviation. Any school board district may have no more than three split precincts. And those split precincts can only be divided between two districts. So in a few of our districts in these plans, they have three splits because we're dealing with large populations and making sure we can get within that plus or minus 5%. So that's really like the third criteria. We must be done and have this a ordinance, I'm sorry, resolution, to the Secretary of State by June 20. Um, else you will not qualify, be able to qualify for these new districts in your upcoming election. Um, we might have a district attorney here who could tell you what happens if you don't do that. Um, but it, you won't like it. Um, trust me. A, a judge will be drawing your districts for you. Trust me, that will happen. Or you'll have to come back and it gets messy. Um, here's the population information for Beauregard. Grew about 900 people, allegedly. I mean, I think I've been over this a couple of times already. That, you know, since, since the date is what it is, I think we all probably agree that these numbers don't really accurately, rep accurately represent the population of Beauregard, but we are confined by the law to use the PL94171 redistricting data to draw our school board districts, so this is the data we have to use. This is your ideal populations if we have a 10 member plan or 11 member plan and that second population deviation is the actual numbers so we're dealing with you know 180 160 people on either side of that, of that ideal number so the numbers get pretty tight pretty quick because remember we only have census blocks to use to draw these districts and these census blocks also have to be physical features as well so that can limit them as well so we're, we have a limited number of puzzle pieces from which to confect these districts. So sometimes when you say, well, why does that boundary look like that? Well, that's because the Census Bureau decided that's the way they were gonna draw that block, and we had to use a physical feature to get there. Um, although they don't look too peculiar, I don't believe. Here's what we started with. Growth in the south end of the parish. Um, everywhere else, either a little low in Deritter or a little low on the west side of, of the parish. And that's the data which you have to have Superman eyes to see, um, but it's supposed to limit some. Here are our plans. Here is the 10 member plan. The dark blue lines you see are the current districts as they exist today overlaid on top of the new plan, okay? So you see, essentially, because Southeast Beauregard grew the most, you see districts coming down, those districts down there shrinking a bit, and districts coming from up north to absorb that population, sort of stretching those districts in the middle. Um, clearly, one of the main intents was to keep the Maryville and the Singer districts trying to, to represent those areas and the rest of the population having to be divided up between Deritter, East, and South. And there's Deritter area and a 10 member plan. And the data, minority districts okay, all districts within the deviation. Moving on to 11 member plans. This first 11 member plan drops a new district in Southeast Beauregard to absorb that population. And again, once you drop that district down there, it does mean that those districts in the middle sort of get stretched again to accommodate the population growth still. And that's the Ritter in this plan. Data, minority district still good. Now, I was asked to examine the attendant zones for Beauregard. This is a map that was provided to me by the school board. The highlights are mine. Um, and what I did was take that data, those boundaries, and just go to the nearest, cent I'm sorry, Beauregard precinct. Does it match up 
completely? No, not really. But because the blocks are kind of crazy looking, it, it, you don't get much more fidelity um, by using blocks instead of precincts, plus it's easier to describe. So there you go, you see it. It has a fair representation of your districts, your, your school board attendance zones. Not perfect, but gives you some idea. When you do that and divvy up the five attendance zones based upon the population in those precincts, this is the sort of average each attendance zone should maybe get in a 10 member plan, 11 member plan. Now, do we think this is perfect? No. Do we, does, there's no definite argument for, for pure proportionality in any of this, but this is just an intellectual exercise to show us what area may deserve more parts of a district than others. So, in a 11 member plan, under this sort of hypothesis, you get Singer, Maryville getting one district, DeRitter getting five, and South getting one and a half, and East getting one and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. Two point seven, really, if you round up. Um, and when you do that, you get this. The deep blue Eastern DeRitter that's the new district. Um, and 3B gets to get split between East and South. There's the redder in this plan and the data minority district doesn't change from the further other plan. Um, many of those districts don't change at all. It's just a reconfection of the districts in the middle. And then I put them all at the end so we could just kind of go 10, 11, 11 E. And it's 11 E because I went through B, C, D, and E trying to figure out how to do it. So that's my naming convention, not somebody else's. <laughs> So again, 10, 11, E. Okay, so that's, that's what I got. Um, I'd be happy to take questions on anything I, I glossed over. Um, otherwise, time for the public. Mr. Green, before the public speaks, should you give us maybe the outline of the process of how voting is supposed to take place? It seems like that could potentially <clears throat> be advantageous that we know that at the beginning. Uh, well, I don't know as far as in regards to uh, the speakers, but uh, I'm pretty much uh, just flying by the seat of the pants on how it's going to proceed with the voting and stuff. You'll have three options before you, the way I understand it. Uh, I think we would seek a motion for one of the options. If it receives a second, uh, there'll be discussion on it, and you can vote on it. And if that option passes by a majority vote, that's the option. If it doesn't pass, then you move to another option, I guess, and go that route. <coughs> There's, anyway, that that's how I look at it now. I know you have to look at one at a time. There's other ways that can be done. But, uh, Dr. Blair, you mentioned this. something recently about the last will of the board, last testament. What would, can you define that, please? <clears throat> um, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not giving you legal advice. <laughs> <laughs> I did state a holiday in selector. Um, that's a joke. Um, as a non-lawyer, but as someone who works for the legislature, we often talk about the last express will of the body. So you pass something, you pass a 10-member plan, you pass an 11-member plan, and you come back and adopt a 10-member plan on top of it, it's the last thing you adopt, is the will of the body. The last act you make is the will of the body. That's my appreciation, but there's better lawyers in here than I am. Would you vote on something if you get a majority? Would you vote on something else? 
I guess if somebody makes a motion, you can do what you want, but that's uh, not normally how you would do things. I thought once something received the majority, that's... Not a lawyer. <laughs> no, you, can, you can amend motions, you can... Not after they pass. After they pass, you can go back and amend it. Amend it, it okay. And if you get the votes on it, then. I don't know if that clarifies anything, right? We mm -hmm. took a shot. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate it. I mean, I, I wasn't joking when I said I uh, sat here and, and how do we give all three options due consideration and fairness and hopefully hear from not only the people but the board and, and work our way through it. Which there was a road map that we all had and said, here's the steps we go through. <coughs> That's one reason why we I asked Mr. Lestage to be here to refer to him if we need to on questions like that. Okay, we're going to move to the audience at this time then. Uh, thank you, Doc. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Be on standby. Look on anyone. Uh, first green card I was had, uh, handed was Adam Lagno. Uh, Mr. Lagno, if you'll step to the microphone and uh, state your name and address and address the board. Thank you. Uh, my name is Adam Lagno. My address is 291 Foreman Road, Ragley, Louisiana. Uh, I have a little packet of information I put together for everybody. If I'm going to pass those around. <clears throat> uh, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak at this critically important meeting tonight. I'm here as a concerned citizen, parent of young children whom I intend on sending to Bulgar Parish Schools. I'm a graduate of DeRitter Schools and lastly, a partner in education with Bulgar Parish Schools. The matter being discussed tonight is instrumental to the future of this parish and its education system. The decisions made will have a minimum of 10 year impact on our school system, the parish and the children it educates. I felt the need to get involved in this debate after spending hours performing my own research, looking closely at the data used to make such an impactful vote. And it's my intent to present factual information that I've come across in hopes <clears throat> that this board will logically evaluate and decipher the information before you. I've previously been provided with data table labeled Borgard attendance zones to the nearest precinct. That includes population data from the 2020 census and allocates various voting precincts to each of the parish school zones. I would like to ask a question as to who asked Dr. Blair to put together this, uh, this, this data using uh, the nearest precincts and to allocate that to. Uh, well, you want to answer? I, I'm the one that asked for that. Okay. <clears throat> I have one major flaw that I would like to bring to light with using voting precinct data in this case, and that flaw is that the school zone boundaries do not follow voting precinct boundaries, as Absolutely. Dr. Blair Thank you not. stated earlier. By my research, close to 50,524 acres of precincts counted entirely to a particular school zone actually belong to a neighboring school zone. In fact, roughly 15,427 acres of precincts that were counted in their entirety to the DeRitter School District belong to neighboring school districts. It has been lobbied that by using this particular data table, DeRitter is un underrepresented, underrepresented on this board and should be owed an additional seat by point 0.02%, 0 0.02. Currently, the DeRitter School Zone has four board members representing this zone more than any other zone in the district. Are you aware that since 2011, DeRitter has experienced a 20% decrease in enrollment? Between 2011 and 2022, the DeRitter School Zone has lost 538 students. On a side note, I think uh, there's a reason for this drastic flight to neighboring school districts, and that should probably be an equally important uh, and separate discussion amongst the board. 
It should be no surprise to anyone in this room that South Borgar area has, has experienced rapid growth over the last 20 years, so much so that the enrollment is limited due to not having the facilities to accommodate all the students. Since 2004, the South Borgard Zone has added 384 students, a roughly 23% increase. It accounts for 30% of this entire school district student enrollment, yet it is underrepresented on this board by having just two seats. By comparison, Doritter accounts for 40% of this school district student enrollment and justifiably is represented at the current 10 member board with four seats. As I wrap up my time tonight, I think it's very important for the people in this room to ask questions, engage one another, make a hard effort at getting this decision right. You should ask the folks who put versions of this plan together at the last minute, who lobbied for it to be passed tonight without having much time for information to be reviewed, digested, and interpreted by the people making this important decision. Were there political motives behind it? I will let you decide that for yourself. At the end of the day, the citizens and the students of this parish have entrusted each of you to ad advocate for them and to make sure that this is a fair and impartial vote. Each and every one of you are being evaluated tonight based on that, and now is the opportunity to get it right. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Nancy Tower. I live at 191 Connor Road in Longville, Louisiana. First of all, I want to say thank you for all the hard work. I know this is not easy. I know Dr. Blair has been doing quite a few of these and uh, it's a lot of, a lot of numbers to pull together. So we acknowledge that. Um, and I want to say that I'd like to reserve the right to speak after a motion as well, because I, I don't know what's going to come out of this. And of course, Mr. Lesage can um, reference the school board uh, public comment period. But before any vote, um, you have to hear public comment before a vote. So right now, I can't make a comment on a motion that I haven't heard. So just a statement at the beginning of the meeting may not um, may not meet my need if I don't hear a motion. So, um, and I'm sure y'all can question um, our DA on that if you need to. Let me say, I, I am a little disappointed that I came um, to the meeting on the 12th. And, and I understand that we've had census data in hand since about November. I also understand that we've had people meeting and working on maps and plans. And I thank them for all that work. And I saw two options. I had time to think on two options, pray on two options, absorb two options. And then was very surprised when I looked on the website in preparation for this meeting to see three options. I had no idea there was a third option. Um, I understood that there are issues. Let, let me say, I, I, there might be issues from a, tw a 2000 census, a 2010 census. I don't know. But if that's the case, those have been issues for decades. And here we are in a like last ditch effort. I mean, this has to be done next month. And last minute, we get a third map that most of us have not seen or, or heard of. And I was disappointed. I'm going to tell you, I think. I think public input, when you want to be transparent, when you, you want to have that input, you need to have those discussions, okay? The first time y'all saw the maps was not on the 12th. I'm hoping that you were all engaged and should have had that input in advance. So now I just feel a little bit frustrated that that major change didn't come up earlier. Everything that I see in South Bow tells me we're underrepresented in the census, if anything. Granted, the whole parish may be, um, but I think people who drive by, you know, they say, don't believe your lying eyes. You can just open your eyes and see what's going on there. So, you know, not only do I think we're underrepresented in the 2020, and I realize you can't use that data. I'm just saying, consider that. But we've had two more years since then of historic growth that of course is not represented as well. Now the 11 member map that was presented on the 12th made sense to me. 
Um, it may not correct historic issues from 2010. I don't know about any of those. What I know is that we have, we have some serious growth and we have actual data. And you have maps that have been presented and made public. And my hope is that you will focus on those two maps rather than last minute throwing another map out there because um, I, I just don't I don't see that's not good business from my school board y'all had time I, I really wish you would have looked at it earlier thank you okay Michael Clary Nice to see everybody again. It looks like you already added your 11th member and she's probably the cutest one in the whole group back there. <laughs> Good choice. Um, kind of like you, I'm flying by the seat of my pants, Mr. President, because I'll be quite honest, I am, uh, I'm shocked that there's a third option tonight. Um, disappointing is a good word that was chosen too. And so, I don't know where Dr. Blair, is he hiding? I don't blame him. Maybe somebody else can answer. Just a couple of quick questions. What, oh, thank you. Do you, maybe you can answer, maybe somebody else. How did the board, did, did everybody get an opportunity to see that new map? And if so, how did that happen in such a short period of time? When was I asked to do this? Like last week? I'll, I'll address that. As okay. <clears throat> Just, you want me to continue? You don't want to answer? Yeah. I won't use up your five minutes. Okay. Well, Y'all been gracious before, and I may go over a little bit, five minutes, because we you threw a curveball to us tonight, so you know, just please bear with me. So I thought it would be, uh, sitting back there writing the notes, it might be important for you guys to hear what it's like from the public's perspective. I've been at all the meetings that this has been discussed at. You guys have been gracious to allow me to speak to you, but you know what's happened through this whole process. We don't. So I just want you to step back and think about what it's been like for us. So in December, that was the first meeting we had. Great presentation. He showed a map. I don't know where, could I borrow him again? <laughs> I think I'm gonna need you, Dr. Blair. Oh, he's gone. Well, so he showed us a map of the current, the current districts. And what that identified was some districts in the north lost. They lost the decline population. Some districts, that's it? That's the original. Okay, some districts in the south grew. And so we left that meeting with a thorough presentation, thinking that that's, that was the issue to be dealt with. And you know, my, my interpretation with that was, there's probably gonna be somebody from DeRitter come down the south and we split. That is not ideal. I would not wanna be caught between the two biggest schools in the parish. Fine, that's what was presented to us. It was also told to us that night that this would have, we would try to have this done by April so that there was plenty of time, you know, nothing drags on. And then, you know, then you, and then we were told you guys would individually meet, have your input, and we would come back and look at the maps. Very reasonable. April comes, no meeting. Okay. Let's go back to the last meeting. So the last meeting, um, again, we have a thorough presentation on two maps. You guys know way more about how those maps got there. What we know is you guys had input over a five or six month period. The expert that you chose to hire developed two maps. And we, thank you, sorry. He developed two maps. And those were to, obviously would be the two maps after that period of time that you guys thought were the best. Granted, some people may have had more input on one map than the other. Doesn't matter because they're put, Oh, that doesn't matter to us because that information was given to the expert that you chose and we got pre presented those two options. So um, as late as Friday afternoon, uh, I, I pulled up, it was after lunch. Uh, if you guys have never had the, um, the, the, the uh, po' boy from, uh, with the ham and cheese po' boy from Dairy Morning, it's really good. I just finished that when I pulled up the maps. So I know it was close to lunchtime. There were two maps, the same two maps that had been presented. No reason to 
How many caution? Saturday, I started getting some phone calls that there was a third map. No way. I can't, when did that happen? I mean, did that happen Friday night? Saturday morning? I mean, when did that happen, and why would it have happened after those were presented to us? That makes no sense. So, hey, maybe there's going to be a third option. I thought there's absolutely no way that's going to happen. But it did. Tonight, tonight we're here to do that. So I started thinking about each one of you guys. You obviously, your community thinks enough of you, thinks you have a great reputation, you're trustworthy enough to come represent our children up here. And to be honest, if they have that much confidence, if we have that much confidence in you, I feel like tonight, we, we're not talking, to, it's not even as much as about what map you choose, is that this process now looks bad. It smells bad, and I don't, we gotta think about how to correct that. And so it doesn't matter as much about which map is the best. It, it matters that if the best map should have been presented first. And so if you, this third map, if you believe that was the best map, you had five or six months to give it to us, and you didn't. What are we supposed to do from the public's perspective? And so, you know, that, that map, if, if, if this new map, and I'm gonna give you another perspective of how this can be viewed from the, from the public. I don't think it's correct, but here's how things happen. The board waited to the last minute. The board is trying to jam a map down our throat without giving <clears throat> us the information. I don't think that's accurate, because some of you I know, and so I can't say that. But perception is reality. That's going to be the reality if we don't stop this. And so it may, it may be that that's a win. It may be tonight that that's a win to, to get this new map through. And I was thinking about, oh, sitting over there about the, the 2017 World Series Astros. If you're from here, probably remember that. You'd be excited. I was pumped. Astros won. Uh, we go through, you know, you talk about how great they did to build the team. And then all of a sudden, you kind of start to hear that maybe they cheated break your heart right you don't want to be you don't want to believe that but but nevertheless when history looks back on that win there's an asterisk by that win and it's not only that team it's every member of that team that that asterisk carries with them carries with them to the next team into their personal life into their professional life you guys don't need that you guys don't deserve that this board does not need that kind of division we don't want that in the community and perception is reality. So just sitting here thinking, how do we remedy that? I only see one option. We got to disqualify that new map. I don't see how you can move forward with the division that it could potentially bring. <clears throat> I, I just don't think that win is worth having an asterisk by your name. So I'm going to ask you guys tonight, don't, don't leave here with an asterisk by your name. Make it right. I think right now, let's disqualify that map and let's move forward with what we were told was gonna to happen tonight, which is voting on two maps. And those maps may be a little different. You guys were very honest with me. They could change a little bit. You never said there'd be three. Never said there'd be four. If there was 15 options, they should have been presented that night. So I'm just curious if anybody's willing to make it right and let's, let's step up and let's, let's disqualify that map and move forward with the two maps that you presented to us. I have something else to say after that, but I just wanna see if somebody's willing to do that. Say what you wanna say. Okay. Well, I'm gonna condense the last part. I was prepared to talk about two maps. I'm gonna talk about one. Can you, do you have the one the, the, the original 11 map? So the only thing I want to say about it is if you look at that map, it's a, it, it is a win for every single person because of one reason. De Ritter declined, but it does not penalize De Ritter for having a decline in population. That is a win for De Ritter. De Ritter should have more than any other place. If I look at East Beauregard, it protects East Beauregard so that they have their representation. It does the same thing in Maryville. It does the same thing in Singer. 
and at South Borgard, all it does is absorb the growth. And some people in South don't want to see growth. Some people do. It doesn't matter. It's happening. That's not, that's not something we can control. That's the only map that is fair to everybody. So I hope when I step down, somebody will, make, will, will step up and make that motion <clears throat> to disqualify that map so we can move forward with dignity. Thank you very much. Okay. I made a few notes here, and it looks like most of this uh, I would like to address, I guess. Uh, and Mr. Zagno's comments, uh, he kept alluding to student enrollment. I don't think we want to go there. First of all, I don't think we legally can go there. So, so the, students, the students don't matter? No, we're not saying that. The law said, what are we to use? the 2020 census. But let, let's talk about student enrollment first. Well, the first thing we kick out is close to a thousand people because they're prisoners or work release. So do you even need 10, I mean 11 positions? That almost does away with your 900 growth. <clears throat> the second thing is districts like Singer, that really penalizes them on how many school board members they would have. The third thing is you're saying, well, students don't count. John Doe taxpayer out there is a citizen but doesn't have any children in school. So who, who, who are we considering if you just say student enrollment? Just those with students? The whole, the whole area is paying taxes, living there, working towards better schools and so forth. So student enrollment, believe me, that's, and the reason I know a lot of these figures I visited with Miss Crane when this started back in November, because I was thinking like you. Let's look at this, where are the students at? You know, in Fort, Loretta had 0. .4040, South at 0. .3018, but then you get down into Maryville was, was about 0. .7 something, Singer was less than five, East was 1.3 or 1.4, uh, and South was two point, well, they were three, I already said that. And I said, well, maybe we need to look at this, you know, districts that way. But then at the first meeting we had with you, <coughs> it was brought out and, it, and I thought made clear, we can't use student enrollment. We, we're stuck, and maybe stuck's not the right word, but we're looking at the population as of the 2020 census. And I guess that makes sense in a way. We could all sit here and project <coughs> growth or project decline in enrollment and stuff, but you just got to, at some point, here's the standard that we work with, right. and we work with that. In regards to your school zones and stuff, that's as close as we could come working with Mr. Cooley, and that's sort of where the bus routes are. Now, I hope we don't have buses that are running in zones and running to schools that's not in the school zone. I hope we don't have students who live outside the school zones, especially those that are in closed schools. So, I mean, I don't know if we want to go there. And trying to look at these numbers, the maybe I need to, time frame has been mentioned repeatedly, you know, when you're being blindsided by this and it should be kicked out. The process started in November, true. We met with Dr. Blair, he came in, he gave us the data. And the data by that was where we were in 2010, what we're having to use in 2020. And he threw up a map. Where are you now? Where are your districts at? And how do they fit? Well, some of them, I'm going to use Mr. Taylor, for example. He had a perfect district. Man, his numbers were right where they needed to be, and it's like no changes. But in that first meeting, if you attended it, you heard me keep repeatedly saying, some of us are sitting here thinking we're not going to be impacted. Basically, everybody will. Because you move one <coughs> district line there, guess what? You've infringed on somebody else. And then he's got to play with numbers. Well, wait a minute. A lot of times then the numbers doesn't match. So who do you go to? You go to the next neighbor over here. So even though it's minimal, you hope, you're gonna, it's not going to be exactly the same. We're not going to work. Can I say something? Yes, sir. I don't want to get into a debate or a discussion. No, I just I just want to state a fact. So, the I think it's pretty mm -hmm. ironic that DeRitter on the ten member uh, table 
gets an additional seat by 0.02%. Okay. Not only 10, no, on the 11. No, it's, it goes on the 10 to the members, the railroad stays the same. And, I, and I'll address that. It's not supposed to round up right here? Well, we, we haven't in the past. The river is at 4.52. Now, on the 10-member so, plan, it stays at 4. So the, the precincts that with were With the understanding that those five-tenths are shared with districts, you know, that also were maybe a little over or a little under. And the, the precincts that were allocated to the Ritter, okay, the Ritter is the only, I guess, zone that had precincts allocated all to Ritter but extended into other zones. There were no other school zones that had precincts counted towards them that expanded into the DeRitter school zone. And I well, found that pretty ironic. The, the only one that I'm aware out. of would be uh, Precinct 7 with Maryville, and that's been a hard line to define. Where well, I, is I listed them all out for y'all on my map. Okay, yeah. well, that's so I'll pull that information that, that. just to give clarity. Uh, that would be Precinct 16. All the votes or all the population went to Deritter, could have been shared also with South Guard to East Guard. <coughs> Precinct 16 would be all the, what all are we the population that discussion went to until we get to the rest of and it. And with the South Guard, 17, Deritter, all none to East Guard, 18, Deritter, none, all, the, um, excuse me, Deritter, all none to East Guard, and then also Precinct number 7, which is the one that you were just referencing, um, all went to Deritter, none to Maryville. Are you talking, no. It says acres. Are we talking acres? Uh, I'm not talking about Mr. We're talking acres because that's the with, with the with the map that you guys put out doing this by person. This is completely different than what he handed out. Okay. This is so we don't have this a copy is census of that. data. Welcome to make a copy of that. This is something I requested from Dr. Blake. I'm sorry. You look like he wants to say something. I don't know if I do or not. <laughs> 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 I should take the hint for using the whole precinct to, to do this. When I look at the attendance zone map, the, this map, that map, it, it appears to me that it's those boundaries are done by township and range lines, which bear no resemblance. You can't get a census block near there. They're invisible lines. The census typically doesn't hold anymore. So it would have been of a jagged sort of zigzag so I just went with a clean line, which is whole precincts, easy to understand, um, but to everyone's point, of course there's inaccuracies, right? Mm -hmm. But any bias you're reading into that, it's me. And it's not because I, I, I'm agnostic on what we do here tonight. It was me doing clean lines, easy to understand, you know, a quick hit on, on what generally it was. So it wasn't Mr. Virgine telling me what to do on this. So I would make that clear. The other thing is, you know, what we looked at uh, when we come in the first time uh, in November, and then some point in time you came out with here's plan one, or for lack of a better term. Uh, I don't know, and, and we came back off individually, I think, at least I was here individually. You asked to meet in, individually, get your comment. There's quite a bit of shifting going on. When I came in, I was about the third or fourth one. We moved uh, the Singer District a little further west. That consequence uh, involved moving Casey up northeast. And that came in on Wesley. And, and uh, he's sitting there and he said, what do you think? And I said, hey, I'm fine. I'm at the point where I, I really don't care. You know, you draw it where it can fit. Uh, and we'll go with it. And I said, are your numbers okay doing that? And if I remember correctly, he got to looking and he said, well, Mr. Taylor's, we got a problem. He's dropped below the acceptable level. He said, let me look at your district. He said, you could give up something. I said, what do you think? And he looked at it and he drew an area out. And uh, in order to do that, he was you know, on his screen, he could pull up, what's the population in each precinct? Or census block. Census population, yeah, in each precinct. And then he took a sliver off, and I'll be honest with you, I looked at it, and I'm like, what is that? And it's like, that's a creek. And I'm like, I don't even know where the creek's at, but it's, you know, he could do it because the police jury, you know, they set what you can and can't move around. Uh, in fact, after he moved it around, I said, what road is this? You know, and, and, and 
he got to look at it, he said, it's not a road, it's a power line. You know, and I'm like, okay. So, but I mean, what it showed me was, hey, there's numbers out there for each precinct. Now, I don't think he could show me if I cut this precinct off or that precinct off, but it, it got my interest up, and I got back with Dr. Blair, and I said, do you have an overlay or something for that? He said, I don't hear, I don't have it with me. And he said, but look, you can get these numbers off the website. And he gave me the website for the Louisiana legislature. You can go into any district in the state, any parish in the state, and it'll show every precinct in that parish and the census data in that parish. So I began to look at that, just out of curiosity, you know, sort of look at it and say, well, where's the figures at and where's the data at? All right, we move on, we get ready, get repeated questions, mostly from Ray and him. It's like, where are we on this census? Where are we on this census? Get back with Dr. Blair, and, and Dr. Blair did the state legislatures, and he's probably done 20 other districts. Well, I'm sure the state legislature was his top priority, so he's like, I'm busy, but I'm, you know, I'm working on it, I'll get back with you, I'm busy, I'm looking at it. Uh, if I remember correctly, then it was brought up Again, I got with Mr. Cooley the morning after a meeting, and I said, uh, can you reach out to Dr. Blair and see where we're at? He called. I was sitting in his office, and, and Dr. Blair graciously answered, and he said, well, look, I'm just about finished. He said, I've got a, I'll get, try to get to y'all the 10 plan and the 11 plan. And we're like, well, we only were aware of a 10 plan, or at least I was. And he said, no, I've been asked to work on an 11 plan. Okay, well, where is it at? You know, send it out. Well, supposedly this first 11 plan was confidential until certain members had a chance to review it, and then it would go out. So that was some of the delay there. When that was all sort of straight and orchestrated, we got the 10-11 plan. We called a meeting shortly thereafter for the public, uh, it's not required that you have public meetings, but we had heard, we knew there was a lot of interest out there and trying to be as transparent as possible. Wanted to have a meeting and wanted to hear from you. What are your concerns and stuff? At that meeting, two plans, y'all were all right on that, was presented, the 10 and the 11. That was the first time as a group, we had actually sat down and looked at the 10 and 11 plan to discuss between ourselves, much less hear from the audience. End of discussion. <coughs> they come out, okay, here's the 10. Didn't get a lot of discussion on it. Here's the 11, quite a bit of discussion. And I sat there and I tried to listen to what the audience's concerns was, the criteria for what the people who were <coughs> presenting or in favor of the 11 plan or helped develop it, and I sat there and I said, you know, in my head, if we're doing it based on census and we're looking at this map and stuff, uh, there, you know, and I, I said that night, I thought that we might ought to look at school districts where the population is, what the populations are in that school district. And I said, in a, just a broad sense, I'm coming up with one singer, one Maryville, five to Ritter and what's that, four or whatever the rest would be in, in the east. I said east would have 1.4, south 2.7 with an 11-member plan. So I said in my mind off the top of my head, those districts that can stand, substantiate their whole numbers, those are easy. You put them in place. Those that don't have a whole number, a 2.7, a 1.4, or whatever. I think we would need to do like we did with Derrida for years. That was 4.5. They didn't get five. They had four. They shared with, you know, other districts and stuff. So I said, if, we, if we're going to seriously consider the 11 plan, I think, you know, we need to look at these figures and stuff. But I said that night, I said, but I'd like to get with Dr. Blair to substantiate the numbers. These are David Bidrin's numbers. You know, uh, it's sort of like people ask me sometimes, what do you think about a, an item on the law? And I'm like, 
I'm the best jailhouse attorney you ever saw. You'll end up in jail, you know, if you listen to me. But these are not, these numbers I pulled off the interstate. I'm not sure where school boundaries are. So I said, I'll try to get with Dr. Slater. I did. He was busy a day or so, but he got back with me as soon as he could. He said, uh, what are you wanting? I said, well, I think based on the discussion the other night, if we're gonna look at an 11 plan, I would like to look at it under these considerations. I said, the main thing is, the growth is in South. First time I met with you, you asked me, do you see any problems? That was back in November. I said, I see two. We want to ensure we got a minority district and we start working from there. And I said, South has to have more. I mean, that's where the growth is at. So when I met with him this time, I said, I think Singers, basically what they've been drawn is okay. Maryville would be okay. It looks like the Ritter would have five. And I said, what you, I think you would do is come down that Eastern boundary and, and go that direction. I said, as far as the rest of it, I don't know those districts that well. I would start at the South end of the South Boulevard district and come up because that's where the population is. That's where the growth is and get my two districts definitely two districts there, then come up and probably go east and share some there. Well, he drew a proposal and the first one is like, well, we had some people competing, uh, incumbents. And I said, I don't think anybody wants that. See if you can move the stuff around. Then we looked at another one and inadvertently we had a, or I think we, he was working on it. He had a school board member that was not in this, his old district. You know, and it's like, well, nobody wants that. Uh, so anyway, trying to be transparent. First of all, when he sent me the data, I sent that out first. I said, that Governor Mr. Schooley's office said, send it out. Send that to every board member. There's the numbers that was talked about at the meeting and they can uh, try to substantiate it, dispute it, whatever you, they want to do. Then when we, got to, I think he got his instructions, and, or not instructions, but he said, I've got some plans. I gotta start somewhere, let me let me send something. And that's when the exchange started about, well, we got two incumbents in the same district. We got this and that. So finally it got to a point where he said, I think this one will work. And I said, well, I'd like for the other board members, or at least four of them. And, and why those four? Two were not at that 12 feet. Maybe. May 12th meeting. So I said, they didn't hear all this. I said, I'd like to involve them. I'd like to involve a member who has expressed a lot of interest in me getting that data after the meeting. And I said, be honest with you, I, I, I think we need to involve Mr. Green because it looks like his district may be the one that would shift one way or the other. We tried to set that up. You were unable to come in person trying to do it by phone and then I got to thinking well look to make this as transparent as possible and to try to get input on this before a map is developed I, I got with him and set up a conference call for him and the other five members and I guess it's a good thing we did because there were some inequities pointed out after that meeting as far as where things need to be or some of the conflicts we had so that's how you got, per se, a third plan. Was there anything devious and all? I wish I was as smart as a lot of people may think I am. No. I honestly started with the belief 10. 900 is less than 2% of an increase, but we're gonna increase the number of board members by 10% at a cost of a minimum of $10,000 a year. I don't think that's justified. Didn't that night. But if we're going to go with an 11-member plan, well then, let me let's consider all of this data and look at a possibility of going this route instead of the, the first one that was proposed. I don't know if I've answered all the time frame or, or whatever, but uh, there, like uh, there was. Can I say something real quick? Sounds like a lot of time in this decision-making process, we used whether or not it was going to affect an incumbent's 
ability to get reelected when trying to draw out districts, which just blows my mind because it should be about the students and the people of this parish, not about whether or not somebody's going to be able to get reelected if we draw them out of their map. But I'm not saying I agree with it, but that's reality. Well, you're the one who said that you use that as your determination. And I asked him not to do that. You're correct in that. I did ask that. Okay. He could have drawn that area out. Teach. He would have probably had two districts coming up in the south and the two board members from the south would both be in that in one of those districts. One would be new or go over that way. And stuff. But anyway, that's uh, that's your opinion. I mean, and you have a right to it. So. Okay. Uh, we've heard from the audience. We've heard from Dr. Blair. Uh, it's been, we sort of got off track a little bit in, in our sequence and stuff. And, you gave you gave some thought on this other plan about. I'm sorry, I can't. You hear. gave some thought about this other plan about trying to line it to school districts. I tried to look at the population from the census population within the school districts. So, if we're only using census data, why can you use school districts? But. Those of us who want to use student population, why can't that be? Considered? Ask him. He knows the law, not me. Your primary <laughs> is census numbers. And your primary is having minority. What's next? Well, those are the only two you have to use. You can use any other data we use. I mean, we you can use, use student population. geography. Yes. We use whole precincts where possible. We use incumbency sometimes. Not, like just, not to defend incumbency, but just to say that population elected these board members if you can keep them in a district where they can still be they've been voted in why arbitrarily create a district where they can't run if you don't have to I, mean, I think that's that's the rationale behind it. it's not that's sort of I mean, protecting them if not you just use that land plant land plant map that our right. attendance but, zones are and you just count out the number of squares 10 times doesn't mean you can't consider um, school attendance zones or uh, student populations those can be secondary tertiary criteria that you evaluate um, but have to get within that plus or minus five percent total population irrelevant to you know who's plus or minus 18 or in, enroll in school or whatnot it's total population is the and we discussed that enough, you know right. and, yeah, and yeah. all three of these maps do the population is mm -hmm. checkmark yes, right? sir. okay yes, sir. so we can take that even off the table or we can take the population off the table because all these fall within <coughs> the range that you must have to have a district, correct? So all now maps, we're moving all three maps. All three maps. So now we can move on to the secondary things of what's important for our parish, and that is the students. Okay. Uh, see, this is some of the discussion I guess we needed the other night, but we can have it tonight. What would you change? I wouldn't change anything. I'd go with the first original living map that was presented to the public. Well, then I can't agree with those numbers if you're doing that. Right. Maybe you can agree with these numbers. Okay. If you could pass one down. So let, let me say something, Mr. Green. I mean, I've been on here 13 years and I have nine months left, so <laughs> I've always been transparent and I don't want to ask you by my name. <laughs> so, um, but when I left here on the 12th, I only knew about one man, and that was Dr. Blair. And then all the, that's the only, I know you talked about some, but I wasn't assured that you was make doing a proposal. Now we have three. I have seen no data. I don't know where the numbers come from. So, I mean, I, I'm, also, I'm going to still be transparent. I'm going to be honest to myself tonight to say that I did not have information on three maps. I only had on one, which was Dr. Blair. And I'm thinking we paint. This is what we're paying him for. If his numbers are correct, then that's the way that we should go. So that's just my statement. Mr. Goodrin, I'd like to just kind of, and you kind of alluded to this, and so we could probably talk a little bit more about it. But um, so one of the the issues that I take with the 11E plan adding to East Ritter um, is just 
is this idea that Dritter maybe has been somewhat um, underrepresented um, or no? Dritter had 4.5. They shared because they could not substantiate a fifth member. Mm -hmm. They shared it. Yeah. Okay. So let me, I'll, I'll take that back. That's not the right word. But my point is, is that what, what I felt like in creating um, and working with Dr. Blair on, on the 11, the 11, the original 11 member plan that we talked about on the 12th, um, I felt like that it made a lot of sense because it took into consideration a lot of the determining factors as to, yeah, once you have the population squared away, from there you have to start kind of making it work for your parish. And, and, and you're right, the, the, the net growth in the parish has been about a third of a board member, not a lot. But we also know that the growth um, is also going to continue. So I felt like that that plan provided us the greatest opportunity for future, um, to be proactive in the future growth, to kind of speak to what you said earlier, that, that it, you recognize the growth, we, got it, we have to address it in some capacity. Um, but uh, I, I just, I, I really feel like that Dritter can still have five, represent, five bodies representing them in that, in the 11, uh, rag, the Ragley plan with 11, me and Ray, Ray will actually have to go way up. And, and so the Ritter will actually be represented by the four exclusive board members who represent only one school and then half of me and half of Ray. And something. And, and, and a little bit of Ms. Well. So, you know, so kind of where I'm, kind of what I'm seeing is, is that we don't, we don't necessarily have to have five people only representing that, that one community. We could actually have people representing multiple communities. Um, whereas, you know, which I mean, I, I do in this direct, uh, this 11E plan where I'm now representing East Boulevard and a huge portion of my district is now South Boulevard. But like I said before, you know, Dritter would not be in any way, un I don't want to use the word underrepresented, but all that we're talking about is that fifth person. Is it a whole member or could we straddle and share a member? I feel like that sharing a member actually kind of can benefit in some ways because it forces us to be accountable not just one community but multiple communities. You know, um, just like tonight, I sit here tonight because up on that map right there, that light green is me. A huge portion of my district attends Dritter schools. Yes, I know that I'm from the Dry Creek area and I represent East School Guard, but I also know that I couldn't be sitting here today without those those voters in, in the Ritter. So, you know, my point is is that representation is going to happen because I feel like as a board we do a really good job of working together. We do a really good job of representing all the schools in the parish, not just <clears throat> rural school versus Dritter schools that, that so many in the public uh, say. I mean, I, I, I've been in enough mem meetings here to know that's not the case. We work really hard together. We work really well together. And we do our best to do so equitably among all our schools. So I just, I personally feel like that the 11 member plan in the Ragley area makes the most sense because it address, if, if we were to choose an 11 member plan, because it addresses the growth, it kind of future proofs our, our districts and um, and, and to me, it just kind of passes the common sense test. I feel like to, that a lot of people, if they know that the Ritter population has been flat, if not declining over the last 10 to 15 years, if not longer. South Boulevard has grown big time. Just the fact of just simply adding to the, to, the, to the voter that just only has a map in front of them, I just don't feel like that that would pass the, 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 the common sense test. They'd say, wait a second, we, we grew on the south end of the parish, but we're going to add a member in Ritter. That just doesn't make sense to me. So those are kind of my concerns with with the 11E plan. Um, so I just, anyway, I just wanted to say that just because that Ragley plan, plan has three board members, it's really not three, it's, it's two and a half, like your numbers were saying. You know, Mr. Bowman would just stretch well into Dritter. I would continue to represent Dritter, so Dritter would have their five. So just something to consider. Okay, I think uh, we're ready to move it back to the board. We've had a lot of discussion that probably should have come after a, uh, a motion or, or something yeah. on the board, but that's fine. I'm uh, always out of order, it's okay. No, no. <laughs> uh, 
I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, adopt the original 11 plan map that was discussed with public input. I missed it. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. Bowman to adopt the original 11 plan that uh, was presented and reviewed, and it was second by Miss. Well, any further discussion on? It? Ooh, I did give the numbers um, that was passed out. Um, I do think that as a school board, we are not like a village, a town, a municipality. We're not incorporated. We're not a legislative legislator we're not a group of senators we're not a group of, group of states even yes we are representing the public but specifically and i think we lose sight of this as an opportunity to get back on this we talk about many things but what gets lost in conversation is a student and the children in our parish who are being educated and if we're going to represent the student, because all the other maps have already checked the mark off as far as census numbers, but if we're going to represent the students, the 11 member plan matches up very well. You see the data that I gave out to you? Since 2011, Warburg Parish schools have shrunk by 7%. Singer has grown by 1%. South Warburg has grown by 15%. East has lost percentage by 6%, but it's still well above the curve. Um, Maryville has decreased by 9%, and Ritter schools have lost 550 students, or a total of 20%. The growth in South Borgard is driven by young families who are putting their children in this education system. And as long as we bring back this board to focusing on the children, then we will win. In the past, the biggest complaint about this board has not been the people in it, has not been the policy. It's being the lack of being proactive, the lack of being open, the lack of being transparent. This is a proactive map designed to take in the growth in the parish without disrupting the rest of the parish and the rest of this board. And keep in mind, it still takes six votes to pass anything in a 10 member map or an 11 member map. Uh, what does that have to do with it? We're adding more people, but we are getting to where we're still having the same representation. You still need six votes, even though you're only going up one member to pass anything. Here. <coughs> so it's not like you're losing representation in other parts of the Okay. Anybody else? Well, so Garrett may not say it, but I'm going to say it. Last meeting, you did state that Jordan, with its population of 16,000 plus, has been underrepresented at this point, entire time. And I made the comment, how can that be? Because you guys have four board members, and then the outlying areas that all encompass Jordan that also are have precincts, voting precincts within your area. And I found that statement just to be entirely flawed. And further, when this other map was presented, I found it kind of interesting that the data that you were talking about in last Thursday's meeting was the data that we received almost as verbatim. And during that Zoom um, on the 19th, we were told that there was no map provided, uh, prepared by Dr. Blair at that time. And then miraculously, the next day on Friday, here we go, here's a map, and it's already on the website. Whereas the other maps, right after our meeting on Thursday, um, the 12th, those were not on there, provided it to the public that I know of. They were on there before. Yes, they were. Well, I didn't see them. 
I just found it very odd that as soon as, as soon as we had this new map, <coughs> they, they weren't on there before the 12th. I was clear before the 12th. I want to clarify. They were? Okay. I had looked. I didn't see them because I had tried to find them myself. But, but the matter is, we were all of a sudden, this, this new map that, in my opinion, as I stated in the Zoom, to me was to fit a narrative of De Ritter being underrepresented when they're not. That's and that addition of a fifth member exclusively to De Ritter when we, like Mr. Ray just said, when we have to have a, a six member majority to pass anything and De Ritter automatically having five, how is that an equal vote for everybody? We're supposed to be equal in, in all of our voting decisions. And that's not equal. The, I think the, the statement I made was if we go to 11 members, then the Ritter would justify five, uh, five members. But you still have if five you go to 11 member. and the Ritter doesn't get five, or, you know, per se, then they could be underrepresented per se. There's but it was 4.5 with the 10 plan. Now, you want to play with numbers? About four tenths of that in the east and about a tenth was in the Maryville area. So, uh, the 11 plan here you could have roughly 65 percent of it would be south you would be in the 35 percent based on the numbers and you're there. Singer would be completely out, uh, Maryville would be completely out. So, but if, if you got the population in a area that justifies a certain number, why would you split it? Because we're also seven equal votes. I mean, how many votes does the Ritter need? I'm not saying they need whatever the population census says. Well, it's, you know, so I understand. So, I mean, y'all's objection really is that the Ritter may get a fifth person. I do have an issue with that. When where all of our voting is six members to be a majority, and then Dreher has a fifth. Why is it that Dreher needs a fifth? Isn't sharing with East and South and Maryville? Is doesn't that make up for your fifth member? It could, but then do we uh, share further with South? Do we share with Maryville? Do we share with Singer to pull in numbers? So what you're saying is every district should share. Well, we we should probably do. have. We much no, no, you don't. Do you share with but any other districts? Huh? Do you share with any other school districts? The Ritter? With, with the 11, do I share with any other district? No. Don't with any of the plans. Okay. That's a big issue because you do have South Borgard students in your current school board district right now. Shouldn't have. Oh, you have them. Go look at the look at the plan. Look at your district and, closely. And where are they at? It goes all the way up to Marvin Shirley Road and North of Mennonite Road. Well, you cross 171. That's not in that far. It goes to the South Mennonite Road. On the north side of Mennonite Road. Okay. Of your representative. That's, that's the Ritter's <coughs> district. If they're going to South, you might want to check on that, Mr. Cooner. No, they're not. It's not about the district. It's about the school of the You have South Board students in your district right now. How are you the president you don't even know? What you mean, each student? Uh, I mean, you, you you didn't realize you had South Boulevard students in your district, and you're the president of the school board. Hey, no. Mr. Lago, Mr. Lago, please don't, please don't. That's not that's not health board beneficial. Yes, uh, South Boulevard is a closed school. If they don't live in that district, they're not supposed to be there. The district line is South Mennonite Road. Now, Mr. Cooley, can you check on that? Uh, do we have any school, any students in uh, any of the derivative districts going to, I guess, the two closed schools, east and south? I mean, if we're going to look at it like that. We can go down Mennonite Road and I can show you. What? Well, what I think for that is, so 
So we have Twitter that's an open school, right? Correct. And East and South that are closed schools because it's pretty well maxed out. Yet Twitter needs more representation. <laughs> you they have more people. But y'all are declining. We need to think 10 years down the line. Where are everybody going? To the South? I Why would we, we move our lines up to the North? We use the 2020 figures. But all three of them have done it the 2010 figures. All three of the maps use the 2020 figures. All three of the maps are aligned equally by population and they check mark to make sure that the minority district is protected. That's correct. All three maps show an increase for South. Has to. You only had two before. But not all three of the maps. What about you? Broke Come on, you're you're supposed to be representing your people, man. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay. With the motion before us, will you read it, Ms. Archer? Mr. Bowman offered a motion to adopt the original 11-member plan that was presented, and the motion was seconded by the want some clarity on how y'all should proceed. Do you, do you want some clarity? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so there needs to be a motion, first and a second. Someone can, and then someone may offer a substitute motion for another plan. Then the vote becomes on that substitute motion for that other plan. If it passes, you're done. If it doesn't pass, you go back to the original motion Start over. Or you can simply vote on this one. Yeah. Correct. That's right. Yeah, that's you don't have to have a substitute motion. <coughs> Thank you. Sophia. Okay, so this, this 11 plan that was presented, that was the original plan. Yes. The original slow substitute. It's the one that's on the screen. One that so, so the original, if we vote on this one, that's still an uh, 11 yeah, fifth so, person. So, so the person is assigned somewhere, they just floating out there. Right there. No, no, no. 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 Okay. Yeah. So this is the first one we had. Yes. This is the only one that I knew about. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? We'll do a uh, vote by roll call. Uh, we'll start on the left with Ms. Weldon. Yes. Ms. Weldon's a yes. Mr. Jones? No. Mr. Jones a no. Ms. Jackson? No. Ms. Jackson's a no. Mr. Taylor? No. Mr. Taylor's a no. Uh, chair votes no. Mr. Manuel? Yes. Mr. Manuel's a yes. Ms. Henry? No. Ms. Henry's a no. Mr. Green? Yes. Mr. Green's a yes. Ms. Bruner? No. Ms. Bruner's no. Mr. Bowman? Yes. Ms. Bowman's a yes. What's the tally, Ms. Archer? Six no, four yes. Okay. Motion fails. Next motion. I make a motion. I make a motion that we adopt the 10 member plan. Second. The 10 member plan. Okay, it's been moved by Ms. Jackson to adopt a 10 member plan and second by Mr. Jones. Any discussion? I think it's all been discussed quite a bit. Hearing none, Chair will call for a vote. We'll do the same procedure. We'll do a roll call vote. Ms. Weldon? Weldon's a yes. Yes. Mr. Jones is a yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Jackson's a yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Taylor's a yes. The chair is a yes. Mr. Manuel? No. Mr. Manuel's a no. Ms. Henry? Yes. Ms. Henry's a yes. Mr. Green? No. Ms. Green's a no. Ms. Bruner? 
Yes. Ms. Brenner is a yes. Mr. Bowman? No. Mr. Bowman's a no. What's the tally? Seven yes, three no. Seven yes, three no. Ten member plan is adopted. Thank all of you. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Moved by Ms. Henry, second by Mr. Green. Any objection? Hearing none. Please.